Good day everyone, so my name is Laura Ambarasinas Orobia from BA2A. So today, the lesson that we will discuss to you is all about the week 9 and 10, which is the project-based learning versus problem-based learning. So let me give you a short introduction about it. Another collaborative learner-centered instructional technique is project-based learning or PBL, in which students collaborate in groups to create their knowledge and mastery of the course content. Many people confuse project-based learning with problem-based learning. The fact that they share the acronym PBL is one source of misconception. Examining the outcome is one of method of considering the differences between the two. Students in challenge-based learning must present a solution to a clearly defined authentic problem, whereas students in project-based learning must produce an artifact to demonstrate their knowledge of content. This definition is straightforward, yet it distinguishes the two notions. Furthermore, it has been suggested that problem-based learning is a set of project-based learning because one way an instructor can frame a project is to ask students to answer one or more problems. Next is the history of PBL. Early foundational theories of PBL date back nearly a century ago Philosopher and educational reformer John Dewey proposed the learning by doing method. The 20th century Italian educator and physician Maria Montessori suggested that in a well fostered and prepared environment, children are able to teach themselves and self direct their learning. Nearly a half century later, in the 1960s, what we know as PBL was formally developed. It was first introduced at McMaster University in Canada and became a standard practice in medical education. By the 1980s and 90s, the practice was adopted in some K-12 school. Good morning! So, what is behind PBL? First, based on the constructivist theory of learning, constructivist believes that learning is a journey of project-based learning acquires tasks to be hands-on discovery meaningful information constructivism can complemented by students in real-world situations which be defined as a theory of learning in which individuals are authentic second promotes active learning by challenging students to learn project-based learning is a teaching method in which students learn by actively engaging in real-world and personally meaningful projects. In project-based learning, teachers make learning come alive for students. Third, inquiry-based. Inquiry-based is a form of active learning that starts by posing questions, problems, or scenarios. It contrasts with traditional education, which generally relies on the teacher presenting facts and their own knowledge about the subject. Enquiry-based learning is often assisted by a facilitator rather than a lecturer. Enquirers will identify and research issues and questions to develop knowledge or solutions. Enquiry-based learning includes problem based learning and is generally used in small-scale investigations and projects as well as research the inquiry based instruction is principally very closely related to the development and practice of thinking and problem solving skills Next is PBL well constructed problem to stimulate students' curiosity and engagement. Problem based learning gives emphasis to lifelong learning by developing in students the potential to determine their own goals, locate appropriate resources for learning, and assume responsibility for what they need to know. It also greatly helps them better long term knowledge retention. So let's come now to what are the features of project-based learning and problem-based learning. Project-based learning begins with the assignment of tasks that will lead to the creation of a final product or artifact. 
The emphasis is on the end product. Students work on open-ended assignments. This could be more than one problem. Students analyze the problems and generate solutions. Students design and develop a prototype of solution. And students refine the solution based on feedback from experts, instructors, and or peers. While problem-based learning begins with a problem that determines what students study. The problem derives from an observable phenomena or event. The emphasis is on acquiring new knowledge and the solution is less important. Students are presented with an open-ended, authentic questions. Students analyze the questions. Students generate hypotheses that explain the phenomena. Students identify further follow-up questions. And students seek additional data to answer the questions. So, the benefits to BBL is project and problem-based learning prepares students for a competent job market. And project-based and problem-based learning require use of 21st century skills like collaborative, critical thinking, communication, and creative. So, the so for student benefits, um, it's student-centered approach. Typically, students find it more enjoyable and satisfying. It encourages clarity and understanding. Students with PBL experience rate their abilities higher PBL develop lifelong learning skills. So that's the different. Um, so what is the difference between project-based learning and problem-based learning? The project-based learning, individual or group, while problem-based learning um, is only group. Problem-based learning teachers define the problem. So while the problem-based learning, the student defines the problem. Based learning teacher identifies action step, while problem-based learning student identify action step. And project-based learning um, creative a product, while the problem-based learning create a solution. So, ang last naman is na wala ang project-based learning. Ang problem-based learning, meron siyang metacognition. Of course, the project-based learning and problem-based learning have similarities. They both teacher as guide, student of center, real-world connection, active learning, and self and peer assessment. Next, we have where does PBL fit? First, we have inquiry learning. Inquiry learning is a learning process that engages students by making real-world connections through exploration and high-level questioning. It is an approach to learning that encourages students to engage in problem-solving and experiential learning. Next, we have cooperative and collaborative learning. It is an instructional context in which peers work together on a learning task with the goal of all participants benefiting from the interaction, wherein there are three sub-components in cooperative and collaborative learning. And these are project-based learning, problem-based learning, and case studies. First, what is project-based learning? It is a student-centered pedagogy that involves a dynamic classroom approach in which it is believed that students acquire a deeper knowledge through active exploration of real-world challenges and problems. Next, we have problem-based learning. It is a student-centered approach in which students learn about a subject by working in groups to solve an open-ended problem. This problem is what drives 
the motivation, and the learning. And for the last, we have case studies. A case study can be defined as an intensive study about a person, a group of people, or a unit which is aimed to generalize over several units. Next, we have why project-based learning and problem-based learning are important for the learners. First, we have it is a great strategy to engage students. Second, we have it helps students become critical thinkers. And for the last, it developed 21st century skills of students or the learners. Components of a PBL unit Components of a PBL unit is composed of stakeholder, aisle structured problem, teacher as coach, constraints, formative assessment, problem solving, metacognition, and assessment. Student as stakeholder So in terms of education, a stakeholder is someone who has a vested interest in the success and welfare of school or education system. It is clear that students are the most important stakeholders. The student plays the lead role in the educational process and us stakeholders are expected to participate in the process. I'll Structured Problem Aisle structured problems are characterized by their lack of a clear path to a solution. They include unknown problem elements, multiple solutions, and multiple criteria for evaluating solutions that require learners to make judgments or take a stand on issues. In approaching an aisle structured problem, the thinker must attend to alternative points of view and create arguments justifying the proposed solution. Teacher as coach. The role of the teacher in a PBL classroom is as a coach. The teacher should not expect students to be effective problem solves right away, since learning to solve problems is one of the main goals of PBL. Students will need to be guided during the searching and solving process. Constraints. A well-designed problem is constrained to the issues on which the teacher wants students to focus. Formative assessment. In a project-based approach, the students are presented with a real issue or problem and learn content to solve it. Formative assessment helps students make informed decisions about their learning and helps to teachers adjust their instruction to better support student learning during the PBL process. Problem Solving Students are challenged to develop a plan and create a product or artifact that addresses the problem. Students work towards solving the problems themselves. Metacognition PBL requires using information in a different way to solve problems. Information learned in this manner is functional information and includes metacognitive processes. Therefore, it is necessary to develop individual self-directed learning skills. And lastly, assessment. Assessment is the last component of PBL unit, in which the entire focus of a course or unit is to teach via student engagement in problem solving and exploration. The assessment is student-centered and requires reflection on both the process and the content to be meaningful. Assessment should be designed for the purposes of improving students and instructors' performance leading to further student improvement.